Hello flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and today I'm making a royal mess. I am so far behind from where I need to be. I have a list of things to do that's a mile long and I'm trying to peck away at that list, except things keep popping up. <laughs> so today I'm actually, it's Operation Save the Tomatoes. Something, the tomatoes are not happy, they're turning yellow, I don't know what the problem is, except the only difference between the tomatoes that are doing really well and the tomatoes that are doing awful is the compost. I use the Fort V Vermont compost for the ones that are doing really well, and I use the Pro Mix, the ones looking like poo. So I don't know what it is, if it's the compost, but that's the only difference. So right now, I am making two inch soil blocks and transferring all of my tomato seedlings from the pots and the milk cartons to the two inch soil blocks because they seem to be incredibly happy in the Fort V two inch soil blocks. My mother-in-law is actually coming to help me. In the meantime, I have some things to plant. I got a big order in. I ordered 50 mock orange trees and 10 Christmas ferns. I ordered those from a place called Hilltop Hollow Farm in Pennsylvania, and they arrived this week. They look great, but I don't know exactly where I'm gonna be putting those mock orange trees yet. So instead of putting them in the ground, I put them in containers. So I put them right here. So this is what I did. I just put them, put some soil in the bottom and put them in here, and I'm gonna put them in here just for a couple of weeks until I figure out where they're gonna go and I'm terrified that they're gonna be like a tasty meal for the deer or rabbits or something so I'm gonna figure out a way to protect them look how messy the garage is right now the camera stopped recording because my memory card was full I deleted some memory <laughs> and now we're back in business anyway this is a uh, my messy 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 work area right now I've got all of the tomatoes that I'm potting into the two-inch soil blocks and my chickens oh are you gonna you better not touch my mock orange tree you better Oh, I also bought something else, guys. I bought something else, and I didn't even, I put it on my Instagram, though. I bought two flowering almond trees, and I'm so excited about them. They're gorgeous. Here it is, <laughs> and I'm not planting these yet because Wednesday night, our low is 27, and if I left these out, um, all of these beautiful flowers would be, like, gone. So I am just admiring them right now, and then after the threat of a hard freeze has passed, which I think this week, uh, we're four weeks from my last frost date, so uh, 27 is the lowest. I'll definitely uh, plant these out very soon, but just not yet. And if you're wondering, guys, there is no scent to them. They do not smell. They grow up to 12 feet tall, and they're hardy down to zone three, which is awesome. I'll be using these for pups. You guys are loud. It's like I called them all. They're all coming now. Okay, so the flowering almond trees are gonna go in the ground soon, along with everything else that I have to go in the ground. My dahlia tubers came in the other day too. They're sitting over there in a box. I haven't even gotten to those yet, but I did start my dahlias from seed this morning. So I have a 50 plug tray and I used the, the seeds from Floret and then some of the Unwinds mix that I received from uh, Baker Creek. So those are in, we'll see how they do. But I also wanted to show some things around the farm because things have drastically changed since the early spring tour. The hyacinth are coloring up. Lots of them. They're super short. I'm not sure if that's because their first year or if they didn't like the winter. They're still gorgeous though and they smell good. A lot of my irises recovered too so I'm really excited about that. If I do a little pan here you can see there's I think 33 of them. A lot of them recovered. The allium is going nuts. It's huge. And remember guys, this is like, it goes all the way around. It's kind of intense how much allium is actually growing up. The tiny lupine is no longer tiny. I'm very happy with this. There's little baby ones. That's crown vetch. That's crown vetch, get out of there. So this is the patch of daffodils that I've been picking from. This week I've picked a total of 400, no, that's a lie, 385 daffodils. Good news is the next batch is almost ready to go. Check them out. Here's the good news. They look great. The bad news, I have no idea what they are. I have no idea. There, remember this was planted the weekend that we had the house fire next door and I just did not write down what I was planting. We just dug the earth up, threw the bulbs in. 
and then called it a day because we were just so busy with the fire. So anyway, the doubles, I do have one and it does have a peachy center. It's looking maybe like it's replete, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so it's actually the next day. I was in the middle of filming and I had a lot of customers coming to pick up flowers and I was doing a little bit of a lily bulbs sale. So I had a lot of people stopping by the house. So I paused the camera, we finished the tomato swap and then uh, it was just a night of just starting seeds. I started the rest of my vegetables for the seedling sale, my cucumbers and my squashes, the winter squash and the summer squash. All of those things are started and ready to go. But I wanted to finish the little bit of a mini update around the property. This is the peony field. So I have some peonies that are like overachieving. Some of the first year peonies, especially the ones that I got from Sunflower Steve as a gift, he sent me some tourangels and some FDRs, but the tourangels Wow, he sent me these beautiful looking roots and they're sending up 10 shoots, like it's incredible. I think I'm definitely gonna see some, some first year blooms on those ones, but I know a lot of people will pinch the buds on the, their peonies the first couple of years in order to let the roots establish and, and maybe eventually have more blooms. I'm not that kind of girl, I'm not gonna do that. I, I might disbud peony side shoots, but not the main shoot, the, the main bud that comes up um, because I'm, I'm like right now, I want them. I want them right now. So if you're new here, there are, I have to count, but I think it's 465 peony roots. About 235 of them are second year plants and then the rest are first year plants, but they're outperforming the second year plants, some of them anyway. So they're all, they're not, none of them are labeled. They're all not labeled, none of them. None of them, no idea what's what. No, <laughs> I have a chart inside where I label everything, so I know where everything is. But I can't find that chart. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's not lost. I misplaced it, um, but I know it's somewhere. It's not gone, so I just need to find it. Mm. Beauteous. Some of them are over 12 inches tall already, which is very exciting here in 4B. Now, last year I got my first peony bloom mid-June. I would say June 15th or so is when I was able to harvest a couple of buds. And yes, I harvested some buds off my first year plants. Didn't care. Those are the ones from Sunflower Steve, the ones that are tourangels, and I'm very excited. I do notice a huge difference between the first year and the second year plants with the size of their stem. They're much larger, hardier, thicker, beautiful. I'm very excited to see what happens this year. This is an example of when I'm talking about like just the size of the stems itself. The, this is a second year row and they're just so much thicker than the first year. This, this row is just amazing. I'm, I'm guessing it's Coral Charm. I'll have to look it up, but that's one of the earliest varieties. The whole entire row looks fantastic. I think there was one rotten tuber, and I, it's a total though, I think I found three rotten tubers among the whole field, so I didn't think that was that bad. And then over here on the side, this is the ranunculus. No buds yet, uh, something ate all of my anemones, so those are a bust, even the ones with the buds on them complete bust so that's a bummer <laughs> but the ranunculus are still looking great the ones further up are a little yellow but they're coming along this is the original patch the first batch of ranunculus that I put into the ground now it did take a couple of really cold nights so the outer petals got a little bit of a frost damage I did have them covered you can see the frost cloth I have it laid across the side I did have them covered in a double layer of frost cloth and they still got a little bit of a damage. I think it was like 16 degrees that night. I think it was 15. So 15 degree night, double cover, a little bit of frost damage, but the new growth coming out of the middle is just dark green and beautiful. So I don't think I'm gonna have an issue here. I've showed a couple of my ranunculus growing friends and they said they'll be just fine. But if I don't start seeing buds by the end of this week, I don't think I'm gonna have flowers for Mother's Day. So we'll see. You can see how the like outer low leaves have a little bit of a yellow to them, but that's okay. The new growth in the middle looks fantastic. Okay, now let's take a quick look at the tulips and then I'm gonna plant some Christmas ferns. Oh, and I probably should show you the difference between the tomatoes because that was a big deal. Don't they look amazing? All of those tulips, 
Hmm. So these are the ones that I think are going to be ready first. And I did find my, uh, my old list on my old phone. So I had written down the order in which things were planted in my old phone. And then I got a new phone, so I had to find that. And I would say the stems are already about 12 inches on a bunch of them. Eight in, like maybe eight, 10, 12, six. And they're gonna get better, obviously. These are nowhere near being ready to pull. I would say another two weeks, maybe. I'm hoping another two weeks because that'll bring us closer to Mother's Day and then I can pull the bulbs and then hold them in my cooler slash refrigerator um, until it's time. But these are the ones that are closest to being ready. I do have some doubles that are looking gorgeous, but of course doubles take longer. Doubles have to be a little bit more developed before you pull them, otherwise they'll never open. I made that mistake on a few of them last year. Here's an example of the doubles. Now this deer fencing has <laughs> old weeds on it from last year. But look at these guys. I'm so excited about these. These are those ice cream ones. And right next door, we also have like just all of the tulips really are getting the, the buds. And uh, it'll just be, you know, kind of a guessing game as to who's gonna come first. Last year, I had a surprise package from one of my wholesale suppliers that just said, surprise. And uh, they wouldn't tell me. <laughs> what kind of tulips they were so this is the batch of the surprise tulips from jake and uh they're not an early one i can tell you that right now because they're they're not as far along as the friends so but these are the surprise ones we've got that many that came up and uh, we'll see what they are so guess what guys remember how we weren't sure about my lilies that i planted last year because i cut them so low because they were so short well i mean <laughs> look how many are coming back those are all the lilies from last year that I never dug up. So we'll see. I mean, they go back really far. There's hundreds of them here. So we're going to see if uh, they flower because you never know. They might just come up and throw green or they might flower. I know some of them are going to flower. I would say at least 75 are going to flower because I did not harvest them. They were completely blown open after a stretch of hot days and I couldn't sell them. The petals were literally just dropping off to the ground. And then there were others that I never harvested because they had grasshopper damage. Grasshoppers like to come on here and chew on the lily petals. So make sure you're watching out for that. Just a quick update on some of the stuff that I direct seeded a couple weeks ago. The only thing that I could see that is coming up is cress and some bupleurum. The larkspur and the orlea, I don't really notice the seedlings popping up yet, but I do have a lot of cress and I do have some bupleurum. So this is in my backyard down a hill and there is a little system that it's a trail system that goes through there. And that's where I'm planting a lot of my shade stuff. Let us go into the forest. So down here in the woods, I already have a lot of stuff growing down here. A lot of trout lilies. I have a lot of the snake root flowers that bloom way in the fall. And I also have a lot of partridge berry, like the ground cover, stuff like that. I also have a lot of ferns down here. And I'm so excited because I said, well, I know ferns we can use in arrangements, but not all of them. I've done testing on the vase life of all of these ones that grow wild along, there's a creek behind me that runs through the property, and none of them stood the test of time in the vase. By day two, they were kind of wilted and not nice looking. So I said, all right, well, clearly ferns like to live here. So I wanted to get the proper ones, and that's where the Christmas fern comes in. Now a Christmas fern will grow in zones three through nine. They are perennial, they will come back every year. Now the Christmas fern is fantastic for people growing flowers because they have a 10 to 20 day vase life. Now I ordered 10 bare root ferns and they've been soaking and you can already see their heads are like the fiddleheads of the, the amazing ferns. There's a nice looking root right there. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Okay, so they've only been soaking for a little bit. So I'm gonna be planting, I bought 10 of them. I'm gonna plant eight of them down here and then I'm gonna save two of them. Maybe I should save three. I think I'm gonna save three of them because I do wanna put them in the, the shade area up by the front porch, the whole new landscaping thing that we're doing, hopefully soon, as soon as those chickens are enclosed. So seven of them down here, I'm gonna save three of them. I'm gonna pot them up up by the house and save them for the new shade garden in the front yard. So when you're planting these, they say to plant them about 18 inches apart, although they can grow up to three feet wide. But 
That's okay, 18 inches is fine in my book because this is also where I'm planting the hookara, a lot of the hookara, a lot of the hellebores, and a lot of the columbine down here in this nice shaded area where it gets a little bit of morning sun and then it's protected from the hot sun of the afternoon. Not even gonna put like a patch of them in, I'm kinda just gonna sporadically place them around. Oh my goodness, this, this soil is incredible. Like it's just amazing. You are gonna go here, friend. Oh my God. This rock has a huge strip of, of quartz going through it. Oh my gosh. Look at that, it's absolutely beautiful. When I was a kid, I swore this was diamonds. It's stunning. Oh, it's quartz. It's running all the way through. Oh my gosh. This looks like a lovely spot. Okay, so those are in right in front of me here. I did already put in 25 columbines, and then um, I'm gonna be doing the rest of those today because they need to get in the ground. I'm also gonna bring the hellebore bare roots that I have and plant them down in this space. I'm really hoping that they're going to be happy here and the critters will leave them alone, fingers crossed. Anyway, thank you guys for sticking around and we'll see you soon. You are looking at the playground of my childhood. So this is a tray of tomatoes that were transplanted into two inch soil blocks. And let's see, like <laughs> these ones are in pro mix. Do you see the difference between, <laughs> clearly we have issues. Uh, it's fixable though, it's fixable. Look, there's hair everywhere. How does my hair get on a tomato plant? Oy. Anyway, so we spent the day yesterday, we didn't get to those yet, but transplanting some of these very sad looking seedlings into two inch soil blocks and to see you know, what they'll do. I'm sure they're going to recover four more weeks until the seedling sale. They will get stronger, this fan's blowing on them, and they will look like this, because these are amazing. So guess what? Next year, no more pots, just two inch soil blocks, because clearly, they prefer this method. I also wanted to show you guys the morning glories that I started on, on the 6th. Oh my gosh, guys, look how cute they are, I love them. And one more update quickly from the seedling room. Look at the mahogany hibiscus. Oh my goodness, look at these leaves, they're turning mahogany. They look so good, I'm so excited about them. Oh my gosh. Get out of here. I'm gonna leave this log to your imagination. Now a Christmas firm, firm. I love you.